personal finance PowerPoint presentation. Fund a fund, F-O-F. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from Investopedia, Fund of Funds, FOF, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by James Chen, updated April 12, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, strategies, tools, keeping in mind the major categories of investments, that being the fixed income, typically the bonds, the equities, typically the common stock. Also thinking about other tools we might be using like mutual funds, like e ETFs helping us possibly to diversify with less of an initial upfront investment as opposed to investing in individual stocks and individual bonds. Keeping that in mind, we're now thinking about what is a fund of funds, FOF. You might think the FOF would have stand for like something like friend of a friend or something like that, but no, fund of funds that is. A fund of funds, FOF, also known as a multi-manager investment, is a pooled investment fund that invests in other types of funds. So in other words, its portfolio contains different underlying portfolios of other funds. These holdings replace any investing directly in bonds, stocks, and other types of securities. Okay. So if we're thinking about an individual investor saving, say, for retirement or something like that, we could be buying individual stocks, individual bonds, but that's often costly and difficult to diversify with. So we might be purchasing something like mutual funds or ETFs attempting to pool our investment with other money from other investors, the fund manager then allocating our investments across multiple different investments in accordance with the strategy of the fund. So that's going to be a way for us to diversify. But you also might have a fund that is using the capacity to diversify by investing in other things, which are investments in other funds, for example. So it gets a little bit complicated in terms of the layers going on, but the strategy that we're thinking about as an individual investor may be similar that we're investing in, say, mutual funds, helping us to diversify in some way. Also remember that when you're investing in a 401k plan or an IRA, some kind of retirement plan, then typically the tool that is being used is some kind of like mutual fund or ETF that is now under the umbrella in essence of a retirement plan like a 401k or an IRA or something like that. Okay, so FOS, that's not friend of a friend, that's a fund of funds, that's what that stands for. Usually invest in other mutual funds or hedge funds. So they are typically classified as fettered or only able to invest in funds managed by the FOS managing company or unfettered or able to invest in funds across the market. So how a fund of funds and FOF works. The fund of funds FOF strategy aims to achieve broad diversification and appropriate asset allocation with investment in a variety of fund categories that are all wrapped into one portfolio. So that should be the ease for the end investor for us. That's what we like to see, have it all done in some way so you got it all in one portfolio there. So there are different kinds of FOS, funds of funds, with each type acting in a on a different investment scheme. So scheme often sounds like it's a negative tone term uh, to me at least, like, it, like it's gonna be some kind of, someone scheming in some kind of negative way, but it's just a strategy in essence here being used as an FOF, fund of fund, may be structured as a mutual fund, a hedge fund, a private equity fund, an investment trust. The FOF may be fettered, meaning it only invests in portfolios managed by one investment company, Alternatively, the FOF may be unfettered, letting it invest in external funds controlled by other managers 
from other companies. So when you're looking at you know the funds that are being managed, are they only allowing the people, you've got funds of funds, so now you've got a fund that includes other funds. Do the other funds only include funds that are also managed by the same company, or can it include other funds that are outside of the funds that are managed by the current company that the fund to fund is being managed by? So fund of funds advantages, typically the FOFs, fund of funds, attract small investors who want to get better exposure with fewer risks compared to direct, uh, directly investing in securities or even in individual funds. Investing in an FOF gives the investor professional wealth management services and expertise. Investing in an FOF, fund for fund, also allows investors with limited capital to tap into diversified portfolios with different underlying assets, which is kind of one of the keys of individual investing. We want to get that diversification possibly with a lesser of an upfront money that we are particularly investing in. Many of these would be out of reach for average retail investors. For example, hedge funds typically require six-figure minimum investments or require investors to have a minimum net worth or both. Most FOFs, fund of funds, require a formal due diligence procedure for their fund manager, both their own and those managing the underlying funds. So applying managers' uh, backgrounds are checked, which ensure the portfolio handler's background and credentials in the securities industry. Fund of funds disadvantages. Though FOFs provide diversification and less exposure to market volatility, those returns may be lessened by investment fees that are typically higher than traditional investment funds. Higher fees come from compounding of fees on top of fees. So now you've got funds that are managed, right? And now you've got funds that are managed that are, have other funds in them. So now you've got two layers of fund managers, right? You've got the fund managers that are running the funds, the, orig the, the lower level funds, and then the fund managers that are compiling those funds together, increasing the overall fees in essence. So the most uh, like most mutual funds, FOF carry an annual operating expense known as the expense ratio. So that's the one we want to be comparing to see if it's appropriate or comparable to like type of investment. So as well as managed fees and operating costs. However, FOFs, investors are essentially paying double because the underlying funds in the FOF all have their annual cost and fees too. In the past, funds of funds prospectus, prospectuses didn't always include the fees of the underlying funds. As of January 2007, the SEC, Security and Exchange Government Oversight Board, uh, began requiring that these fees be disclosed in a line called Acquired Fund Fees and Expenses, AFFE. This seems important to me. That seems like a pretty good move to be more transparent in terms of the fees that are actually you know, being underlined here because you've got the fees of the fund manager that you're investing in and the fees of the funds that they're investing in because they're not investing in individual stocks or securities but in other funds. So a fund of funds might charge annual management fees of 0.5% to 1% to invest in funds that charge another 1% annual management fee. So the FOF investor in sum is paying up to 2%. Small wonder that after allocating the money invested to fees and other payable taxes, the returns of fund to funds investments may generally be lower compared to the profits that single manager funds can provide even if the funds perform very well. Picking good fund managers and funds can be difficult too, especially if the FOF is fettered. The FOF may end up owning the same stock or other security through several different funds, thus reducing actual diversification. What are the pros? You've got the ultimate in diversification because now we have funds that are going to be compiling other different funds and those other different funds are compiling different underlying securities. So that's a huge goal that we're typically looking for. Professional management expertise, alleviation of risk and volatility, exposure to assets usually beyond small investors. What are the cons side of things? You got the additional layer of fees because now you're paying the fees to the manager to compile the funds of the funds. And each of the funds, of course, have fees as well as they compile their underlying 
uh, components, and that's one of the big downsides. You got the risk of overlap in holdings. So if you have multiple funds that are holding other securities, you could have some multiple funds that are holding on to the same underlying securities overlapping some of those investments. Difficulty in finding qualified managers funds. Real world example for fund of funds. Since they are so varied, funds of funds can be hard to track as a group and to compare. However, an index does exist. We've got the Berkeley Fund of Funds Index sponsored by Berkeley Hedge. The index, of course, is an attempt to give us kind of an average of the performance of a particular area, such as the funds of funds. So it's a provider of data on alternative investments is a measure of the average return of all FOF funds of funds that report into the company database. So through Q1 quarter one 2022, for instance, 156 funds of funds had yielded on av an average return of 0.33% year to date. The S&P 500 during the same period lost more than 7.5%. So are funds of funds common? Dedicated funds of funds may be less common than standalone mutual funds or ETFs. However, the SEC Security and Exchange estimates that approximately 40% of all registered funds hold an investment in at least one other fund. How much assets are invested in funds of funds? According to the SEC Security and Exchange, total net assets in mutual funds that invest primarily in other mutual funds reach over $2.54 trillion in 2019. Are funds of funds regulated by the SEC Securities and Exchange? Yes. Like all other pooled investment products, FOF, are also overseen by the SEC Security and Exchange Federal Government Entity. Uh, in particular, SEC Rule 12D14, updated in 2020, sets out procedures that provide a consistent framework for fund of funds arrangements. The SEC also requires FOFs to disclose their fees in a transparent manner.